Hello. If you're joining me now, highly caffeinated and inside of my megafauna terrarium. In here, I house all of my favorite creatures. I talk to them. I try to keep them amused. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for all of you today. We will be playing through one of the best, period, one of the best games of all time. And maybe the perfect game to play on Scientist Plays. Again, I'm a science educator, but I'm also a gamer. I'm playing through Half-Life 2, not only showing you how to get through this amazing game, it's not that hard, but also giving you as many science lessons as we possibly can as we do so. I want you to enjoy, kick back, kick your feet up. I know we're not in the command center yet. Lola up there, she's not going to bite. I'm I mean, it's like a great white shark, right? I mean, she'll test bite, but her mouth is so big that the test bite usually just kills you. Do you want me to learn in this economy? Um, this is free tier one education, Mikey. Half-Life 2 is arguably one of the, not only the best, but uh, one of the most sciencey games ever. The main character is a theoretical physicist. That's who you're playing as. One time in Tucson, I saw Kyle lift train cars like Mr. Incredible. You weren't supposed to tell anybody that. Free tier Kyle education. Oh, with a heart symbol with your hands. Once you have control of Gordon Freeman, there are no cutscenes. Everything is told while you have control of the character. The story is told through the environment, through interactions with NPCs, and it does a brilliant job. Behind me, two 75 inch monitors to look at you and to look at the game. Also behind me, a PS6. I'm not using it. Why? Because I have a PS4 controller right here. Don't want it. Don't need it. In front of me, two 27-inch curved OLED 8K monitors. But Kyle, 8K can't technically fit into 27. Shut up. Ah, that's good caffeine. So, because there's no cutscenes in this game, uh, there are a couple of moments where you're just walking around and doing nothing and just listening to people. And they're all like MIT PhD physicists talking to each other. So we will try our very best. As I've said many times before, I'm not a YouTuber and I'm not a supervillain. Hey man, turn it on! Thank you. The game will start off with a uh, cutscene. And I won't, I won't speak over it because I love the delivery of this cutscene. The voice actor is awesome. Some physicists at MIT found a cool crystal. They shot energy at the crystal and accidentally opened a uh, warp tunnel or a wormhole. Through the wormhole came a galactically colonizing uh, army called uh, the Combine. The Combine are, well, I won't spoil what they are, but they assimilate other races, other uh, creatures throughout the galaxy, make them do their bidding so that they're combined. They're combined forces of many different kinds of aliens and technologies. Anyway, we accidentally opened up the portal. They came to Earth, set up civil protection like this guy here, set up citadels to keep the population under control. And right now, one of the physicists involved with that... Uh, initial resonance cascade gorman Fr gordon freeman is about to go into is about to arrive under mysterious circumstances arrive into city 17 the hub for all combine activity in this area rise and shine mr freeman rise and shine not that i wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job no one is more deserving of a rest, and all the effort in the world would have gone to waste until... Well, let's just say your hour has come again. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. God, I love that. Wait a second. Welcome to City Chat. 17. Wait a second. You have what does this remind me of? It 
has come to my attention that many of you have been, let's say, dissatisfied with the way I've been handling recent uploads at the facility. I assure you that on behalf of our benefactors, I am more than qualified to say that you are quite safe here at the facility. There's no need to worry about upload scheduling, upload quality. We are very happy here at the facility. I know I don't need to remind you that while you're here, your key cards must be completely visible at all times. We wouldn't want to make an example out of you again. Man, I knew that reminded me of something, I just wasn't sure. Pay attention to the environmental storytelling of this game. No cutscenes, it's all told all told through what happens on the screen. I was hoping I'd seen the last of him in City 14. Welcome. Welcome to City 17. This must be a mistake. I got a standard relocation coupon just like everybody else. About that beer I owed you. It's me, Gordon. Barney from Black Mesa. And look who's here. Great Scott and Freeman. Alex is around here somewhere. Good to see you. Okay, Gordon. You're gonna have to make your own way to Dr. Kleiner's lab. Pile up some stuff to get through that window and keep going till you're in the plaza. The other thing that this game does really well is that it works on a physics engine. And so the physics engine is pretty finicky, but it's pretty uh, accurate. And uh, with that accuracy, it allows you to do environmental physics puzzles like this. What is the crouch button? <laughs> crouch, get get out of here. What is the crouch button on my on my controller? This is going perfectly, by the way. Perfect. Get out. Thank you. You're going to be seeing a lot of loading screens here. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Aha! You don't know about the speed strat of backwards bunny hopping, do you? <laughs> I'm a speedrunner now. <laughs> Pick up that can. Oh. <laughs> oh, back for round two, huh? You don't know this speed strat, though. <laughs> what a fool. I don't think he's going to keep following me unless I just let him... Ow! Ow! Beautiful game. Okay, okay, jeez. <laughs> Don't worry, my legs broke my fall. Hey. And loading screen. <laughs> Man, I'm good at this. So obvious uh, analogs to, you know, pogroms and Nazi Germany and that kind of thing. Oh. Boo. He's one of us. I can't take it anymore. Everything's gonna be okay. What are we going to do? We'll think of something. Please. Bye bye. <laughs> So now he was talking about, will they ever act, uh, deactivate the suppression field? Now that's our first science lesson. In this game, 
the combine in order to suppress populations of people. I mean, there's billions of humans, right? And they need to suppress an entire population. They do a couple of things that armies have done for a long time. First, they assault the population with a virus-like um, incursion. So uh, in this in this case, it's head crabs, and we'll get to head crabs. Um, on Earth, in real life, um, it's usually things like disease, um, whether on purpose or not. The other thing that they do that's interesting in this game is to keep the human population in check. So um, maybe from the Combine's point, point of view, humans reproduce very quickly, um, once every nine or ten months or so. If, that's, if they were going back to back to back. But they need to keep this human population in check, and they might be, for all intents and purposes, humans might be like rabbits to the aliens of the Combine. So what they're doing is, what the game says, is applying a suppression field that alters the genetics in such a way that it makes humans sterile. The sex cells, the gametes, don't become uh, embryos, even if they're fertilized. Um, there's some genetic damage in there that prevents that from ever happening. Now, what could this suppression field be? I think the simplest answer off the top of my head, if I had to think about it, not some weird magic field or, or like uh, electricity or anything. I think it would probably be some low level radiation. It would probably be quite easy to bring in a radioactive source into a city or a community or spread it throughout the environment such that the ambient levels of radiation induced enough mutation in human DNA that it rendered them sterile without killing them. Uh, Mortal says, wouldn't that wipe us out in a generation? Well, not necessarily. If the suppression field just made, say, 95% of humans sterile, then the birth rate would go way down and something that would be more manageable. Um, this is also what the Salarians in Mass Effect do to the Krogans because their population rate gets uh, jacked way up and they, they spread throughout the galaxy and they're warlike, blah, 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 blah. So... I think our first science lesson, science lesson today is that the suppression field of the Combine could be some raising of the ambient levels of radiation such that it induces mutations in human DNA to make those humans sterile. Here we go. Hey. You look kind of cool. I should 3D print that mask. Nope. Okay. Hey you! In here! Okay. Head for the roof! There's no time to lose! Here they come! Help! Attention, residents. This block contains radioactive detection. Info. Uh-oh. This game also has a phenomenal soundtrack. And loading screen. <laughs> Man. So here, you'll, you'll start to hear the soundtrack for the first time here. It's really good. Uh oh. Go. And now, in one moment, I will introduce you to, inarguably, the best sidekick in all of video gaming. The most fleshed out, the most charming, everything. No, you don't. Dr. Freeman, I presume. You better hurry. Dr. Kleiner said you'd be coming this way. I don't think it occurred to him that you might not have a map. I'm Alex Vance. My father worked with you back in Black Mesa. I'm sure you don't remember me, though. Remember him from Black Mesa? Your old administrator. And loading screen. Nailed it. Dude, nice We've move. been helping people escape the city on foot. Oh, and by the way, nice to finally meet you. Where did she get to? Lamar! Come out of there! This is a science lab. Oh, hello, Alex. Well, uh, almost all right. Fun fact. Lamar has gotten out of her crate again. Dr. Kleiner's head crab is named Lamar after the actress Hetty Lamar, because it's a head crab. Gordon Freeman. It really is you, isn't it? 
I found him wandering around outside. Must say, Gordon, you come at a very opportune time. Alex has just installed the final piece for our resurrected teleport. I can't take any credit for the breakthrough, Doctor. Nonsense. There you are. Man, Gordon, you stirred up the hive. We can't keep him here long, Doc. It'll jeopardize everything we've worked for. Don't worry. He's coming with me. We'll inaugurate the new teleport with a double transmission. I still have nightmares about that. Oh, I've never done that before in this game. Doc, since he's not taking the streets, you might as well get him out of his city. <laughs> I've never seen that part before. Oh, yeah. You're right. I've got to get back on my shit. But okay. Uh oh, it's time. Time has come, chat. Time has come. Here we go. Ah, Emma, get it off me. Hetty. Lamar. Hetty. I thought you got rid of that pest. Certainly not. Never fear, Gordon. She's debeaked and completely harmless. Air my pet. Up, up. This is just no, like a sci a weird weirdo no, scientist to have no. <laughs> an Have alien you pet, Those right? Are quite fragile. Get into your suit now. Okay. So you'll see here Lambda. Lambda is and and in the title of the game here. Uh Lambda is the symbol that we use as nuclear scientists and uh, physicists to denote half-life, which is why they use this lambda symbol everywhere. Now, half-life has obviously some fun connotations with this game, in that, or with the story of this game, in that humanity achieve, uh, gets some sort of half-life once the Combine show up, like the, our population's being reduced over time. Uh, like our time is numbered, unless we do something. So that's fun. But Half-Life, this lambda symbol you see here, in nuclear physics, lambda means the time it takes for a certain amount of radioactive material to naturally decay into half the amount. So I'm not saying it totally disappears, but if you had, say, a chunk of uranium, after a certain amount of time, half of that radium... Uh, uranium, would have naturally decayed into a different element. How does that work? Well, this uh, how does this, this sort of magic trick of physics work? Well, this decay, radioactivity is unstable atoms, these very large atoms that are jiggling all around. Radioactive decay is those atoms emitting pieces and parts and energy on the pathway towards something not jiggly, something more stable. So you're, it's literally flinging pieces of itself off into the environment. Those are the pieces that do damage to things. But if the pieces of an atom change, if literally the number of protons and neutrons change, then the atom, the element, changes. So over time, uranium can decay into something like lead. Now, the time it takes to do that, we settled on how long it takes to half itself, and then a half of a half, then a half of a half of a half. We call that the half-life because it's a useful figure, not because of any uh, thing inherent to the material itself. There are other figures that we use for radioactive materials, like uh, Becquerel's, I think it's that's what it's pronounced, or Curie's. And this is like literally the counts per second. How many... Uh, how many events, random events, uh, ejecting you know, uh, helium nuclei or gamma rays or electrons or positrons, how many, how many times per second does that happen? So there's a lot of different ways to categorize what is happening and what is radioactive material. Lambda is the half-life of that. And half-life comes in many different... Uh, half-life has a large spectrum. Half-life can be microseconds, it can be seconds, it can be minutes, it can be billions of years. So that's why it's important to know, because if you had, say, radioactive contamination somewhere or radioactive fuel somewhere, you would want to know how long it's going to be radioactive. How long is it going to be a threat to the environment or people? In the case of Chernobyl, for example, when Chernobyl explodes, what actually made it into the environment? The half-life of that stuff is very important. Will it be gone in 30 years or a day or a thousand years? Those are important things to know. This HEV suit um, is a way to protect 
Gordon from Hazardous Environments. Now, I say all that, and I said it's time, because once I enter this suit... Oh, let's do it. I see your HEV suit still fits you like a glove. At least, the glove parts do. <laughs> I've made a few modifications, but I'll just acquaint you with the essential. Tima says, who are you now? Let's see. <laughs> the Mark V hazardous environment suit has been redesigned <laughs> for comfort and utility. Comfort and utility. Oh dear. Doc, we don't have time for this. At least get that suit used up for you. Why not a measurement of time from an unstable atom to when it decays into a fully stable atom? On the pathway towards stability, a radioactive atom goes can go through many different uh, atomic elemental changes. Uh, on the pathway towards something like lead, for example. Now, when I was talking about the importance of knowing what isotope you have or not, when you go from like plutonium or uranium to some down towards lead, there's a certain amount of time where it would be intensely radioactive. And then not so, and then less radioactive, then not so much radioactive, and then not radioactive at all. Now, if we measured that, as you're saying, Victor Becker, if we measured that radioactivity in terms of the total amount of time it needs to take to go from not radioactive, uh, totally radioactive to not radioactive at all, that would be uh, not very useful in a practical sense because when you're handling this material or you want to see what stages along the way can do say you're handling nuclear material at a power plant and you need to know how long that uh, material is going to be useful there's a difference between uh, useful and kind of dangerous useful and not dangerous not useful and not radioactive. Those are all different stages. You can imagine different stages in the life of something radioactive. Um, something could still be radioactive, for example, but not usable in a nuclear reactor. So if we don't know the half-lives, then we're not able to estimate and calculate where exactly all those stages in the lifetime of a radioactive atom are. Meanwhile, let's get this show on the road. Wait, 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 wait. More science stuff. That's just a triangle. That's a that's a waveform. What? Oh, wait, wait. What is that? What is that? Y equals a x plus b. That is the common equation for the slope of a line. I'm gonna give that science lesson three point five if we're keeping track. But uh, that's a circuit. Someone says. Doctor Cleaner's waiting. Uh, that's a circuit. Yes, this is a circuit. Uh, you can see the squiggly bits are resistors. Why don't you position yourself near the panel over there and wait for my work? Send him packing straight away. This is the other main room. physicist protagonist. We're all set on this end. Then let's do it. Let's see. The massless field flux should sublimit, and I clamp the manifold parameters to this condition. Hilbert inclusive. That's a Hilbert field in that's physics. What last time. Uh, that's what he's talking about there. Yeah, yeah, about that let's see. Time. I don't know how those things float. Magnetism? Uh, Gordon, would you mind plugging us in? Excellent. You gonna let Gordon throw this how in? are those things spinning? I would say Gordon? some form of magnetism, but that's a lot to have it. And the thing, the, th the thing about magnetic, oh, it's just gonna make a lot of noise, huh? The thing about magnetic fields is that it's, it's very hard to confine things in nice, tight, um, orderly patterns like that. Final sequence. Um, I've heard it like uh, in tokamak, in fusion reactors, I've heard trying to contain plasma uh, with magnetic fields is like trying to contain water with a sieve. Very difficult. Thank goodness. My relief is almost palpable. Fantastic work, is it? Well, I can't take all the credit. Let's go ahead and bring Gordon through now. Right you are. Nuclear job, waste Gordon. is still radioactive. Why can't we harness it for power? Beca really because, for uh, as we were saying to Victor Becker, not all forms of radioactive material are useful in energy production. And to say more than that 
uh, we'd have to take a whole class about it. But just know that um, certain materials like plutonium and uranium and their radioactivity are more are much better and more efficient at sustaining chain reactions that we get energy out of. And when it gets less radioactive or it's not as radioactive, that material is no longer useful for efficiently producing energy in that way. Gordon, as soon as you're in position, yes. we'll send you the Ethers. And best of luck in your future endeavors. Final scenes. We're 45 minutes in. We're only four, three science lessons in. Ooh, I thought there'd be more. We'll see. Nope. This is Breen. Can actually move during this portion. I'm all but certain it so, so if you're paying attention, this is what the combine looks like in their actual form. It was Gordon Freeman. Gordon Freeman. Well, I hope nothing comes along here and tries to. Oh, good. No. Oh. Feels like the Combine could have seen just right through that window. Oh, they closed it. Never mind. Stop it. Leave me alone. Go away. Our playthrough begins in... Wait, is that... Am I looking at some lifestyle products available in just a... Oh, it, it's gone. Okay. See, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Citadel's on full alert. I've never seen it lit up like that. Get out of City 17 as fast as you can, Gordon. I come with you, but I gotta look after Dr. Kleiner. Oh, and before I forget... I think you dropped this back in Black Mesa. Good luck out there, buddy. You're gonna need it. Couldn't you, couldn't you pass it to me? Those are all drones and they're all looking for me. And that's the Citadel. Has nothing to do with the facility. Get out of my way. Oh, I can't see anything. Stop taking my picture. Okay, bye-bye. Nope. <laughs> oh. Kroby. <laughs> Stop it. And loading screen. Dang. Root canal. See, it's funny. Stop! We didn't do anything! That's it. Where? They'll be looking for you now. See what happens? Crotch! Yes! Seville Doy. Yes. As you know, I always shoot for the crotch. Everybody knows that. Chat, watch this. Now, why does this hap- Oh, no. Why is that- Why have been told that that's not super accurate? Those things exploding like that. It's because the fire equation requires, yes, fuel, <laughs> um, but also oxygen. And if you do not have the correct stoichiomic ratio, this is going to be difficult to do. <laughs> oh no. Of fuel and air to everything else, then it actually can't explode. It's not even... Okay, so that's that. Okay, okay, okay. Well... Oh, that was science lesson for a long time, huh? My legs! Oh! Oh, 
Whoa, hello. Oh, see the little Easter Guess egg there? Are for you, huh? Good thing you found us. You're not the first to come through here by This is the free man. The Combine's reckoning has come. Indeed. Look, we're just a lookout for the Underground Railroad. Main station's right around the corner. They'll get you started on the right foot. Meanwhile, let my Vortigaunt friend here give you a jolt to get you going. Down here, it's bad news for the whole railroad. Oh, this is going to be a real hassle. Loading screen. I hate I I hate structural support. Everyone knows that about me. Oh, hey, oh. Those, if you have jaws inside of your jaws, those are called pharyngeal jaws. It's what uh, you recognize most from the Xenomorph in the Alien series, but animals actually do have pharyngeal jaws. Um, the moray eel, for example, will bite into its prey with needle-like teeth, and then its second pair of throat jaws will reach out and pull the fish in further. If you look at how they eat in slow motion, you can actually see this. I can't sprint, I can only crouch. Sprinting will come in very handy when the helicopter shows up, but oh well. Yeah, that wasn't very- oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I couldn't see! How about that? Plasma guns. I don't like my picture taken, you know that. Wait, are they flatlining? Yes. What you're hearing in their suits is their heartbeats going down. <laughs> sure would be nice to be able to sprint right now. Go! Oh, I can bunny hop. <laughs> yes. Oh, I fell. I'm stupid. Bunny hopping? Look, Mama, I'm a speedrunner. We're getting the hang of this wonky, <laughs> he said, badly. Uh, we're getting the hang of this wonky controller scheme here. Lambda. There we go. If I had to guess what that thing was shooting, I'd probably say, like, some sort of, like, magnetically accelerated small piece of, uh, metal. I don't care for your extraterrestrial tongue. Some creatures do have this kind of uh, predation device, let's call it. There are spiders, for example, that can throw parts of their uh, web with a sticky globule on the end. They will throw it, and it will attach to a creature, and they will reel it in. This alien goo mouth thing is not as crazy as it looks. Man, why is it always spiders? Because spiders are all, because there's so many of them. And evolution has a way of making things that are many, many more. If there's many different kinds of a species, that means that evolutionary niche that they have filled, they are very good at filling it. That's why there's so many beetles. I'm gonna stay here in case any others come through. Hmm, I hope nothing comes Oop. Do you hear that? Do you hear all the- Oh! Do you hear all the bullets move different? Oh, that's awesome! The bullets actually move through the water differently. You see that? It's a very short science lesson, but uh, bullets move through water differently because it's a different density uh, medium. And uh, because, as you know, drag force depends on the density of the fluid, um, 
bullets get slowed down in water tremendously, and that's because water is about a thousand times denser than water, meaning that it will encounter a thousand times more drag force because uh, drag force is directly one-to-one -one proportional with density. That's not the same uh, as it is with velocity. Velocity is squared, but drag force is directly proportional to the density. So if the density is a thousand times higher, it's a thousand times more force, that means it's a thousand times more slowed down, more quicker. I'm about to get the machine gun. And then stuff's gonna get real. If you do, headshots will do more damage to them. When an eel has a maw with a pharyngeal jaw, that's more. When the jaws open wide, there's more jaws inside, that's more. When it sucks in a reef and has two sets of teeth, <laughs> that's more. When an eel bites your thigh and you bleed out and you die, that's more. See, it, the, what this game does really well is teaches you how to do stuff. So it, like, this game's brilliant in that, see, I wouldn't have been able to go down oh, uh, uh, this slippery slope without knocking over one of those barrels first. So it taught me to, uh, to do that, that I, that that would happen. And then it, it, I, I'm directly thrown into a situation where I have to use that information to get past. That's really good game design. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Barnacle bowling, baby. Do you hear that? So I'm going to take a couple shots on purpose. So hear how the bullets travel through water. Oh, you even get the bubbles. That's really cool. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. The jump button in this game is not super chill. What's the science behind sewers? Um, it says death. Uh, well, death, that's a way to... Actually, you know, you say that in jest, of course. But, um, the invention of sewers and having a place to put your crap was is one of the ways that society is possible. Sewers are incredibly important. Once we started separating human waste because we identified whether we knew that it was associated with germs yet or not, once we identified that the spread of disease is not some cultural thing, it's not a witchcraft, it's not miasma, it actually has to do with material, then we created sewers and troughs and, and gutters for human waste. And once that human waste was separated from water, was very away from food, very away from people, it cut down on disease tremendously. And that is one of the innovations that society made to enable cities and towns and townships and, and, and villages to get larger and larger. Now that's a full scale science lesson and I'm not full of crap. So this is a direct physics puzzle that you can't get through it unless you do it like this. So I, so I'll show you. So I want to jump up here, right? Now, one way I could do that is if this was actually up here, but I can't do that because if I run over there, the weight will, ch weight distribution will change and uh, it won't hold itself up. But if I take all these cinder boys and place them, the physics engine is such that it will actually hold it down and counterbalance my weight and because of that it moves around and stuff and I don't have the sprint button <laughs> currently active which I usually use I know I'm using the flat I, I don't know how well how dark this is on your screen but on my screen it, screen it's very dark
Wow. Um, that, uh, did you get killed by the bricks? Uh, uh, no. I'll tell you, people have probably been killed by cinder blocks. Like, a lot of people. So, I'm just, I'm just part of the long storied line of people. Now, in case I get murdered again by bricks? Jeez. Oh, gosh. I don't have... Shoot. Reload. That's sprint now? That's also sprint? Then that's not reload? So what? how do I reload a gun? I can't reload now? Ah! Don't have a reload button anymore. Got sprint. Don't hit. Okay. Here we go. I can no longer... See? Perfect. <laughs> what are you doing? Jump! Golden! Use that MIT education! Jeez. Criminy. Christmas. Don't mind me, just not ducking. Get out of there. Hey, you good? Okay, bye bye. Everyone, calm down. Everything is fine. Probably. Go, go, go. Go. Oh, that was already damaged. Crow bar power! Crow all the bars. Chat, welcome. I'm wearing... Ooh, maybe just you can... Oh, does that say dark energy and a fun design on a very nice tribe blend heathered t-shirt that's super comfortable against very sensitive skin and you might be able to buy it? Welcome to everyone. Back to the gaming wing of the facility. Welcome back to the gaming command center. You mean like this design that you might be able to buy on various products? <laughs> oh, look at the size of my hand in comparison to this monitor. Okay, can we just get one thing straight? I'm huge. We've had more than enough science lessons. That's not true and you're wrong and I'm going to prove it to you. I haven't played Stalker of Chernobyl. I cosplayed as a stalker in Chernobyl. Dollar Store Thor is huge. There are never enough science lessons. 100%. Oh, it sounds like we're in a sewer. I have a sprint button now, and I can reload. But once I get more weapons, it's going to be really confusing because it doesn't show it. Uh, why don't I just show you? Loading screen? <laughs> Valve, with this game, they... Give give some credit where credit is due. They definitely made one of the best games of all time. And just calm down. Wow, that is loud in my headset. <laughs> and not only did they make one of the best games of all time, uh, it was incredibly influential to the point where uh, a lot of the sounds you will hear in many, many, many TV shows, especially ricochet sounds, are from this very game. If the sounds you are hearing sound familiar, it's because... Half-Life 2 was so influential. That is metal. Especially that, you will hear this sound a lot. Oh, that's, that sounds like it sucks. Excuse me, sir, I'm hoarding. You got that, right? You got that, right? The kids say that, right? I don't know, I'm not a child. Hey. Crutch! Crutch! Hey, lot of, you got a lot of blood down there. It'd be too bad if you were to get shot in it. Um. S 
stupid? Gosh darn. There's, there must be a better way. Just play on mouse and keyboard. No. If anyone is noticing anything weird about the chat window, um, again, don't... F Jeez. Hello. Don't talk about it. There's nothing weird. Guy comes down right here with a machine gun. Hello. I'll take that. I'll take that. Kyle, why are you putting that there? You'll see. Now Kyle has a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Hey. Trigger finger! If you wondered why I put that barrel there, it's because of this. <laughs> Controller's good, it's just, uh... hard on whatever this... It's overwriting a bunch of buttons, I can't... It didn't map right, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, go ahead, take my picture. Oh no! Yeah. Hello. Here, take that, it's yummy. Don't drop it. <laughs> you dumb bugs. Uh, I'm shredded. Come here. Uh oh. Come here. Do you mind? You guys mind? Stop hacking my man. I'm actually very excited for it then. Oh yeah. The cliffhanger though. Yeah, I know. Well, the game wasn't finished. See, as you can see, I'm getting much better at the controls. Don't make me look stupid. Thank you. Fill that room with water, such that this other room will now become filled with enough water. Go away. That I can pass through this water. So, what we're learning about right now is buoyancy. And buoyancy, interestingly enough, has nothing to do, the buoyant force has nothing to do with the weight of an object. Rather, the buoyant force is entirely dependent on what the object is immersed in, whether that be air or water or mercury. The buoyant force is equivalent to the volume of stuff that you're pushing out of the way in that liquid or fluid times the density of it. So rather than being dependent on the weight of the object, the buoyant force is exactly equal to the weight of the stuff that object pushes out of the way with its volume. Okay. Now, whether something floats or not is dependent on the weight of the object because the weight of the object, if you're looking at a free body diagram, the weight of the object points down, the buoyant force pushes up. So if the thing weighs more than the weight of the stuff it pushes out of the way, it will sink and vice versa, it will float. And when you do the math, it turns out that the volume doesn't matter as much because the same, it's the volume of the thing is the same as the volume that's displaced. So what it comes down to is the density of the stuff. So if the density of the thing is less dense than what it's pushing out of the way, the fluid, it will float. So by uh, standardization, the, the density of water is one. Let's just say one. So anything with that is less dense than one, less than a uh, thousand kilograms per cubic meter, will float, and anything that's heavier than that will sink, or more dense than that will sink. 
This is why something that's very dense, uh, very uh, light, if you could theoretically put Jupiter in a bathtub, you've probably heard the sciencey fact, it would float because it's mostly gaseous. As another example of how buoyant forces can be cool, a cannonball will float on Mercury. Do I mean Saturn? Sure, whatever. But a cannonball will actually float on Mercury, and if you type it into YouTube, you will find a video of that happening. And that's because Mercury is 14 times denser than water. 14 grams, 14.3 grams per cubic centimeter. And so when you put something in Mercury, you're pushing out of the way a volume that weighs 14 times more than the same volume of water would weigh. And so a cannonball would float in Mercury. You would float on top of Mercury. But don't do that because it's a neurotoxin. Okay, let's solve this puzzle. <laughs> Loading screen. Oh, I should have known that one was coming. Man, hope I don't break my legs. Ah, my eyes! My poor baby eyes. That's what you get. Damn! Wait, was that the right way? Yep. <laughs> we got word you were coming. Yeah, look at me. You got here at a bad time. Really? That, what you hear in the background, is my HEV Suits Geiger counter. I think now we can get to the science of headcrabs. Yep. Stupid little guy. Stupid little guy. What they are doing, what the Combine is doing now, is a tried and true method of shelling a population for, with, when you, when you have tremendous uh, air superiority. We can speculate. What is the point of doing that to a population? Of head of head crabbing a population like this? So the com these are not the combine. What the combine has done is found these creatures, combined them with their own forces as kind of like a shock trooper force. They sh and they and they unleash them on populations. So what is a head crab actually doing? Well, it seems to turn people into zombies like this. But what is it actually doing? So that's a parasite. A parasite uses the host's body. Uh, a parasite can have many different life paths. It can do no harm to its host. It can do some harm to its host and it can kill its host. And these are all for the parasite's benefit. This is not a mutual relationship. There, we are extract, a parasite extracts something from the host relationship. So a remora would be a good example of a parasitic creature, a fish, that doesn't harm a shark that it sticks its little flat sticky head onto, but it does take away some of the shark's resources in that when the shark's feeding, it will swim out and uh, gobble up some of the other bits the shark isn't eating at that time. Um, a parasite could actively take away resources from the host to its benefit. Um, think of something like a tick. A tick will um, draw blood from warm animals, from mammals, for its own uh, sustenance and to complete its own life cycle, drawing blood out of the creature. And it can outright kill its host in the form of some uh, like parasitic wasps, for example, that lay eggs inside of a caterpillar and they burst out and eat the caterpillar alive, that kind of thing. But what I'm getting at, nature is so vast in the ways that animals can interact with each other, and that makes sense when things have been evolving together for billions of years on planet Earth. But I said all that to say this. We think, we have an innate idea that parasites are just like these little bugs and they're nuisances, and when you encounter them, you sometimes encounter them and they suck, blah, blah, blah. But most animals on Earth are parasites. Parasitism is the most uh, 
it, it, most creatures are parasites. It is the most developed niche of ecology and of the biosphere. Most things are parasites. And I bet you didn't know that. And that's why it's, it's science time. Coming through here. See, it taught you to avoid electricity here. And then it shows that this is electrified. Bye bye. Well, yes, you're a parasite, Caleb. Caleb. Hey, Dr. Freeman. Stop. It. Oh, it's airboat time. This thing is hard to drive. <laughs> but it's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. This thing's hard to drive a controller. We're making our way. We're, we're getting pretty far in this game for a couple hours. Geiger counter going off. It's a motorcycle, but it's on water. I played this game. Kyle Jam... J... Uh, Kyle Jr. Amstad subscribing with Prime Gaming. Get another Kyle in here. The more, the merrier. Get another Kyle in here, because the more, the hairier. <laughs> Airboat. The more the hairier? Come on. You are a true gentleman and a scholar if you're nasty. I do want to stop here because it's cool. Look, G-Man. You see him? You see him? I saw him. Yeah, no, you didn't see nothing. No, nobody was there. Don't worry about it. There's also nothing in the chat window or near any of that stuff. I don't want anyone... Just everyone, just calm down, please. Thank you. What do you mean, dirty uncle laugh? Is that a thing? Actually, you know what? I don't want to know. Leave me alone. Station 12, do you read? No, everybody's dead. Sorry. Ah! <laughs> Get out of there. I'm a physicist. This is how you do science. Can I just grab it? Oh. Sometimes you gotta do brute force. Don't try this at home. I'm fine. Let's get it. I was look- Everyone shut up, I was looking at the chat. Woo! I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How does- how often does something that's just a fun experiment lead to something new? You're describing science, my friend. I'd, I would bet that most scientists, when they're doing their first experiment of any design, even if it's, you know, if it's something they've never done before, I bet it's always fun, you know, it's, or, or enjoyable, or, or, or at least um, enriching in some way, or else why'd they become a scientist, you know? What qualifies you as an actual scientist? I don't know. That's something that people who think PhDs are the best thing in the universe like to argue about a lot. And those people are usually kind of boring. Exactly what I wanted to do. Airboat! Airboat! How strong is Gordon being able to drag those barrels underwater? That would be impossible, because... Ah! So as we were just saying... Science... This is Science Lesson 10 point, uh, 9.5 or 10.5. Um, or you tell... <laughs> or you tell me, Chet. Um, because buoyancy, the buoyant force, to force something into a liquid or into whatever, because that's dependent on the volume of the thing displaced and the density of the stuff displaced, water's very dense. It's a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. And those barrels are pretty big. Let's say they're half a cubic meter. So if you're talking about 
half a cubic meter of in those barrels. Ah! That means that when you try to force them under the water, it's effectively like trying to force 500 or, or 5,000 Newtons underwater, which would be way more than Gordon weighs, which would make it nearly impossible for him to do. That's why, uh, eat that. Um, that's why they use those barrels in Jaws, it was because it should be impossible for a shark to pull it down like that, because the buoyant force would be so incredible. Science lesson, what, what number was that? 9.5? 10? Oh, I can't sprint. I don't think there's anywhere to sprint here in this section, so what I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna, see, this is total, everybody does this, don't worry about it. Oh. Beep boop. Boop, beep. Boop, boop. Beep, beep. Hell yeah. Totally efficient button is. What's, what's the grenade button? Mm, this is going to be inefficient. Jeez, man. That would be a mistake, don't you think? If you just came... Don't you think? Can it go through the window? Can it go through the window now? <laughs> oh, come on. Beep boop. See, now, another great instance of game design. What do they do? They show you that you can get the things from those barrels. They show you that you need to throw these grenades at people. And then, uh, and then they introduce this difficult section. Oh, I do... Oh, crap. I do need to duck here. That's, I'll, I'll try to do it without ducking. Little... Fi Little physics puzzle. I love it. Game's so good. Don't sneak up on me like that! This quick weapon switch is not where it's at right now. Bye bye. Who else? What is that feeling of uneasiness you get when you see empty malls like this in this game? Or uh, that, that feeling. It's called liminal. That empty feeling you get. Like this place should be lived in, but it's not. I like, yeah. We were talking about set pieces, right? <laughs> Brute force will do it. So you just went through that kind of difficult section, right? Now it makes you feel powerful. By giving you this! And I know that there's a guy right back. His old. <laughs> Dropped! Okay, I didn't know where everybody was. How you doing, buddy? Okay. Leave me alone. Uh oh. <laughs> Just take all my shields, got it. <laughs> Gotta jump this right first try, chat. <laughs> Do a quick 360, because I'm awesome. Yeah. Making it through. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Ah, okay. 
do I remember where to go? I do. Don't you do it. Kyle acting like he played this game before, baby. Oh, my crotch! How is the food in Chernobyl, says Chorizo Joe. Um, I ate in the same uh, cafeteria that the workers of Chernobyl did, and it was pretty... Actually, it was it was great. <laughs> A lot of guys in here. Go in this bucket, come out the back. Don't know how to switch to the Magnum. There we go. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. Not nice shot. I'm gonna die here. Maybe. Oh. Nope. Come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> you idiots. You're gonna be right there. Go ahead. Duck. Wrong button. Still alive. My sprint button! It's tog- it's- it's crouch now! Oh... Why did you do that, Kyle? That's why... Payback! Line firing! <laughs> yeah, get the hell out of here. Uh, Jake says, what kind of radiation means instant death? Um, it's not necessarily what kind. It's the amount and the rate. But gamma radiation is certainly the most dangerous because it's the most penetrative. Oh, he's back. And I think he's got bombs now. Yep. <laughs> Help me. Bank it like Tony Hawk. Woo. Go! Go, go, go! Are there any radioactive rays that we don't know of yet? Um, there's nothing coming out of radioactive material so far that we have not identified. As far as I know. Yeah, you're real cool now, huh? Because you got bombs. I'm not a fool. Now here comes the most annoying physics jump in all of Half-Life. Can he do it first try? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to call that a no. It's super difficult. Come on, 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 come on. Yes, second try. That is actually really good. <laughs> Go away. Uh, to the uh, right. Ah! Ah! Those things can really spiral out of control. That if you get hit by one, you just get hit by a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing good. Doing good. Okay, that wasn't good. But we're doing good. Oh, 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 Yeah. 
This part's awesome. Yeah! Oh no! I ruined the set piece. Oh, go. Help me. <laughs> Spoiler alert, we're gonna fight that helicopter. We will zombie's gonna pop out of the water. I'm gonna shoot him in his dome. Or not. <laughs> it's a physics puzzle. I need to hold up this platform. And there's an elevator connected to it. So I'm filling that elevator with heavy stuff, but it won't work unless you find this this washing machine. And push the washing machine. Washing machine! My legs. They broke my fall. Now we get a gun put on our boat, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tell that helicopter what for. That gun. Yeah. These hunter killer guns here. See, so like I've been saying, this game does such a good job of making you feel strong. So like after you go through that very stressful section of dodging all these bombs, you feel very vulnerable, then it makes you feel very strong by giving you an entire section where you quickly and easily wipe out dozens of forces with this new weapon. It makes you feel strong, and gaming at its best makes you feel invincible. I mean, look at that. Look at that crap. Yeah! How's that feel? Bad, huh? The power of the airboat overcomes all! <laughs> you are nothing to me. <laughs> ah, the controls! Ah, my body! Who needs a science lesson when you got this? <laughs> <laughs> loading screen. Get out of my face. Yeah, don't even get a chance to drop, you big insect. Don't worry, that's exactly what we'll be doing. Oh, I just saw G-Man. Will you guys calm down? Just melts them. That's what makes you feel strong. Who's who's doing that? Who's rolling barrels? I'm not even going to look. Ah! Oh. Ah! <laughs> Can you explain how durable the crowbar would have to be in order to whack all the aliens upside the head like this? I don't think that's a full science lesson, Exo. Um, because the crowbar being like hardened steel, that that squishes into a squishy head, no problem. Bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. I think there's. Uh oh. Bye bye. No, that's it. Oh, chat, we're almost there. And loading screen. Wait, it's coming. Up. Am I going backwards? No, loading screen. Right, got it. You can be pretty impressive with this thing. Yeah. Um. Wait, I take it back. Oh wait, I take it back. I take it back. We're good, right? Epic gamer status achieved. How cool is that? He said, dyingly. 
<laughs> you can not see you. Hello. Hello. Told you I knew where I was going. Airboat power! <laughs> See how this is the first graffiti and art we've seen for a long time? Probably where we need to go, right? Today on Scientist Plays, we have done no less than 10 science lessons. We talked about uh, parasitism. We talked about what lambda and half-life actually means. We talked a lot about radiation. We talked about density. We talked about buoyancy. Look. Wait a second. Chat, look. Chat, look, I'm an 80s movie. What, you want to ask me to the dance? I guess so. I've never been to the dance before. <laughs> Be nice to each other. Because this is all we got. Kevin, did I look cool with the glasses? I think it kind of adds like a like a nice <laughs>